Welcome back, awesome people, to Cooking From Scratch. It's Melissa, and today I've got something a little bit special for you guys. For those of you guys who are fellow brunch lovers like me, God, there's nothing else like it, is there? Oh, it's the Eggs Benedict, the mimosas. It all seems all wonderful and great when you're having it at a restaurant, doesn't it? Try making it at home, you're never gonna want it again. So for today, I thought I'd take the classic brunch dish, which is the Eggs Benedict, and make it a little bit easier to make at home by giving it a uh, Italian twist. So grab yourself a drink, crank up the music, and let's get cooking. So the main inspiration behind this dish actually comes from another dish that's very popular in the Middle East called, I apologize, I'm gonna butcher this, shakshuka? It, it, it's spelled properly below. I, I really wish I could pronounce it correctly. Its origins come from a bunch of different places, so I'm not quite sure where exactly it comes from originally, but very popular in Middle Eastern, actually even popular in North Africa, where they use a lot of a paste called harissa in theirs, which if you love spicy red pepper, definitely check out Harissa. So what is it exactly? It's basically baked eggs in a tomato sauce, which is what we're going to do today. So not only do I have to worry about poaching the eggs in water, skimming off the white, ah, oh, I, I, I can't. It, whatever sadist came up with poaching eggs, they're, they're grinning from hell right now. So this saves us a lot of work. So basically we're just baking the eggs in the tomato sauce. Again, you wanna make sure this is a little bit thicker than your standard tomato sauce. It's gonna help hold the egg together. So for this dish, you're gonna need So where do we start? Well, where all good romances should start, the bread. Where normally you would make Eggs Benedict on top of an English muffin, we're actually gonna do this on top of garlic bread. So grab yourself an exceptionally long knife and cut about three fourths to an inch of a slice. You're gonna want a nice sturdy bread for this because you're gonna want it to be able to hold up not only to the eggs, but also to the tomato sauce. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with keeping the bread as it is with the crust intact. However, if you like to go a little bit chefy on this, take a wine glass or just a nice wide rimmed glass, set it over the bread. And if it's wide enough, just go ahead and punch through. In this case, my glass is a little bit bigger than the bread below. So I'm going to punch and then take a paring knife and just trim off the excess. Pop that sucker out and there you have it. So go ahead and punch out however many of these one or two per guest as you see fit. And then we're going to slather this with a mixture of olive oil and butter. I find that gives the best browning on these. Throw on some crushed garlic, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of red pepper if you like, and then put them under the broiler till the top becomes a nice golden brown and then pull them out. Now, because this is a very sturdy bread, you don't have to toast the bottom piece, but I'm gonna leave that up to you because we are covering this in a pretty thick sauce. It should hold up on its own, but there's nothing wrong with going and toasting the other side of it as well. Now, compared to your standard slice of ham or slice of prosciutto, when you order Eggs Benedict, depending on how fancy your restaurant is, we're actually gonna use a very common Italian ham, which is called pancetta. Now, if you can't get your hands on pancetta, any kind of uh, nicely sliced ham will do. I happen to like pancetta because normally you can find it diced, so it'll hold up nicely within the sauce. Plus, it's got a really good black pepper kick to it. So we're gonna start off by putting this into a pan and rendering out that fat, because we're gonna use that fat to be able to saute the onions and the garlic, and then ultimately put the tomatoes in. So the flavors are gonna get really nice and friendly. Next up, the onion. For a dish for two, you're gonna want about a quarter of a 
on the medium side onion. Now for these, I like using Vidalia onions because they're a little bit sweeter than your standard white or yellow onion. In a pinch, any kind of onion will do, though if you have the preference, I would go yellow versus white because yellow tends to be a little bit sweeter than white. Take a quarter of this and just grate it right into the pan. We want this to be on a nice low setting because we want the onion to sweat. If you saw our previous episode, we cover what exactly sweating is and how it compares to sauteing or any other version of cooking. So if you'd like to see that, the link will be up in the corner or that corner. I don't remember which corner it is. And alas, no Italian dish would ever be complete without garlic. So again, for a dish for two, I use about two cloves of garlic. Just go ahead and crush these into the pan and let it just simmer and sweat with the onions a little bit until both become nicely translucent. The second they start to get a little bit of brown on them, we're ready for the next step. Now let's talk tomatoes. For me, when I make sauce from scratch, I like to use a combination of not only canned tomatoes, but also fresh tomatoes because both bring a little bit something special to the party. These are whole peeled tomatoes from Italy. Why do I like these? Well, yeah, I could say I'm a little bit posh and say I use tomatoes from Italy. Where these actually shine is that the soil there when they make tomatoes it's something a little bit special and the tomatoes there just don't really compare to the tomatoes here. So bringing a little bit of Italy home, we're going to use a mixture of the canned tomatoes and a mixture of some fresh tomatoes. Now, if you're watching this in the fall or the winter, yeah, these aren't going to really kind of give all that it can be, but I want Italian eggs Benedict, so we're gonna have it. These are Roma tomatoes. Now, kind of like their Italian counterpart, these are wonderful for making sauce. They really give you a nice balance between the meat of the tomato versus the lack of the gel and the seeds that we actually have to get rid of. So once our onions and garlic are ready, we're going to add these in. So to prepare your tomatoes, we're going to cut this in half, but we're gonna cut this in half horizontally, not vertically. I found this makes it easier to be able to get the seeds and the gel out and still make it easier to get the meat out. Take a spoon and just get that gel out. So why are we using a mixture of canned and fresh tomatoes? Well, the canned tomatoes are gonna give us that depth of flavor. The fresh tomatoes are gonna give that fresh acidic flavor. You could use all canned, you could use all fresh, but I find this gives you kind of the best bang for your buck. So I'm actually going to take out the core because the core in these looks like it's a little bit tough. It's going to be a little hard to break down. And then what we're left with is all the meat. So you could do the customary boil, shock in cold water and peel these. It's a lot of work. I don't want to do it. Thankfully, a spoon can take out the work. So we're just gonna dig our spoon into the tomato and just circle it around till we pull out the meat. If you're making this for a large number of people, I highly recommend doing the boil and shock treatment because it will save you <laughs> the most legwork for this. But if you're doing it for a brunch for four or a brunch for two, just save yourself the effort and go this route. We don't want the peels because the peels are not going to break down. So again, you'll find that this is going to be a much thicker sauce than what you commonly come to know as like a Pomodoro sauce or a marinara sauce, because we need the structure to keep the eggs together. Once you're done with the tomatoes, go ahead and add these to your pan and cook it for about 10, 15 minutes, just until the flavors start to come together. Always be sure to add in a good amount of salt, pepper, and if you like things a little bit spicy, a little bit of red pepper flake. Now that our sauce is thickened up really nice, it's time for us to crack our eggs in. So go ahead and make a little bit of a well in the tomato sauce and crack in a couple of eggs. You wanna make sure you keep this over 
about a medium heat because we're gonna to wanna to be able to cook the egg from two sides. We wanna cook from the underneath, and then when we put this in the broiler, we wanna cook from on top. This will help us to make sure that the whites are nice and done, but the yolk is still a little bit runny. Once you start to see the bottoms of the egg start to cook to where they're actually strongly white, but the top hasn't cooked yet, it's still a little bit see-through. You're gonna to wanna to put this under the broiler. Now keep an eye on it. The second that that top starts to set, get it out of there. Remember, this tomato sauce is still really warm, so those eggs are gonna still continue to cook. Okay, our eggs are done, and how you know they're done is you wanna give it a little bit of a shake, and if they shimmy just a little bit, but they hold in their spot, they're good to go. Of course, this is completely up to you. If you like your eggs a little more done, a little less done, feel free to augment as needed. So, we are down to the finale. So let's take a slice of our garlic toast. Grab a spoon. Make sure you use your oven mitt. This pan is going to be rocket hot. I don't want you guys burning yourselves. And we're going to scoop the egg. Just kind of shake it under there. And a good amount of our tomato sauce. And hope it doesn't break and set it on top, woo! <laughs> the other nice thing about this recipe is if it doesn't quite work the way you want it, you can always dress it a little bit. Your party guests will never know. So we're gonna add a little bit more of our tomatoes around the top, because we do want that juiciness. There we go. Top it off with a little freshly shaved basil, or basil if you're from across the pond. And finally, I can hear you saying, but Melissa, it's not Eggs Benedict without the sauce. Don't worry, I got you guys covered. Meet Grana Padano, or is it Grana Padano? I never remember. This is hailed as the king of cheeses. If you can't get your hands on this at your local store, just regular Parmesan will totally do the trick. And we're going to freshly grate this over our eggs and our tomatoes and our bacon. How's that for a sauce? And there you have it. An Italian take on Eggs Benedict that I guarantee you is a lot easier than making the original. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to get the notification next time we go live, you wanna hit that subscribe button down below. Plus, if you know anyone who is a fellow fan of brunch who might like a good Eggs Benedict recipe, maybe hit that share button and send them the link. Thanks everyone, and I will see you awesome people in the next video. Cheers!